السلام علیکم رحمۃ اللہ بیٹھ جاؤ ہاں جی سامنے کون بیٹھا ہے موت میں سوال ہے کون ہے موت میں سوال اچھا بیٹھ جاؤ بیٹھ جاؤ پھر آج دیکھ لیا تمہیں اچھا سید جادب شاہ تلاوت السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وعلیکم السلام و رحمۃ اللہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وعد الله الذين آمنوا منكم وعملوا الصالحات وعملوا الصالحات لا يستخلفنهم في الأرض كما استخلف كما استخلف الذين من قبلهم ولا يمكنن لهم دينهم الذي ارتضى لهم ولا يبدلنهم من بعد خوفهم أمنا يعبدونني لا يشركون بي شيئا وما كفر بعد ذلك فأولئك هم الفاسقون جزاك الله جزاك الله أشي تلاوذ كر لتي هو اچھا ماشاء اللہ جلسے کے لیے مل گئے جائیں گے اور تلاوت والے اچھا جلیس احمد آسن ترجمہ السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ دا واس ریسائٹیڈ از فرام سورہ النور واس نمبر 56 دا ٹرانسلیشن از از فالوز I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the accursed. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. Allah has promised to those among you who believe and do good works that he will surely make them successors in the earth as he made successors from among those who were before them and that he will surely establish for them their religion which he has chosen for them and that he will surely give them in exchange security and peace after their faith. They will worship me and they'll not associate anything with me. Then whoso disbelieves after that, they will be the rebellious. Zakallah. Zakallah. Hadith, Sadeel Tahir. Assalamu alaikum, beloved Hazur. Wa alaikum salam. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وَأَلَىٰ آلِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّكَ حَمِيدٌ مَجِيدٌ قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أوسيكم بتقوى الله والسمع والطاعة وإن عبدا هبشيا فإنه من يعش منكم بعدي فسيرى اختلافا كثيرا 
فعليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء المهديين الراشدين جزاك الله حضور جزاك الله ترجمة خضر سفيرز السلام عليكم حضور the translation of the hadith is as follows. The Holy Prophet وسلم, said, I counsel you to have fear of Allah and to listen to and obey your leader, even if an Abyssinian slave were to become your leader. Verily, he among, among you who lives long will see great controversy. So you must keep to my practice and to the practice of the rightly guided caliphs. Abu Dawood, Kitab al-Sunnah, Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Shayan Aman Raja Sahib. Nazm padho. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Kalam Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salam. Hai ajab. मेरे खुदा है अजब मेरे खुदा मेरे पे ऐसा तेरा किस तरह शुक्र करूं किस तरह शुक्र करूं ए मेरे सुल्तान तेरा सर से पातक हैं इलाही तेरे एहसान मुझ पर मुझ पे बरसा है सदा फाजले का Bara tera Tere ehsano ka kyun kar Ho baya e piyare Mujh pe behad hai karam e mere Jana tera Kis zaba se Mein karu shukr Kaha hai wo zaba Ke mein na chiz hoon Aur rahim Farawa tera Hai ajab Mere khuda hai ajab Mere khuda Mere pe Ehsa tera Zakla Zakla Acha ji Tarjima Mohyad Ahmed Khan The translation of the poem recited before you is as follows. Thy blessing on me, my Lord, is most unusual. How can I render thanks to thee, O my King? From head to toe I am seeped in thy benevolence. Thy reign of mercy has always showered upon me. How can thy graces be acknowledged, O dear? Thy mercy on me is exceedingly great, my beloved. With what tongue shall I thank thee? Where is that tongue? For I am nothing, and thy mercy is considerable. Zakala. Zakala. Aji, Tawarulam diya yu ke video te kya dhkhani hai apne? Hey, baada mast baada. आशा में अहमदियत 
The purpose of Majlis Atfal Ahmadiyya is to prepare us in a proper manner. The second Khalifa, Hazrat Muslim Odd Razi Talahno, said, The purpose of Atfal al Ahmadiyya is to complete the four walls of a building. Being part of Majlis Atfal al Ahmadiyya has helped me to create the love of Allah and His Holy Prophet in my heart. It reminds me that we are responsible to help spread the message of Islam Ahmadiyyad and train future generations. Majlis Atfalul Ahmadiyya has helped me inculcate in me the virtues of regularly reading daily prayers, hard work and truthfulness. For a nation to progress, the youth needs to be trained to be capable and responsible young men. As a part of Majlis Atfalul Ahmadiyya, I am able to have a special connection with Khilafat. It's taught me how to write to Hazur, pray for him, and listen to all the guidance he gives us during his Friday sermons. Assalamu alaikum, Piyare Hazur, Ramadan Mubarak. May Allah bless you with a healthy long life. Ameen. Aapko Ramadan bhot bhot mubarak ho. Allah Taala aapki aur humari duaein kabool karmai. Please keep us in your special prayers as we go through this blessed month of Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak. For me and my family. Hazur, please pray for us so that we can continue to be good waqfin or children. And Hazur, please pray for us that we grow up and serve the Jamaat. Ramzan Mubarak from all of us. I hope and pray Hazur and Hazur's family are well. And I wish Hazur a Ramadan Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum, Piyari Hazur. We miss you a lot. Assalamu alaikum, Piyari Hazur, Ramzan Mubarak. I really hope this corona pandemic ends quickly so I can meet face to face with you. I've been writing you letters. Please pray for me and my family. My beloved Hazur, may Allah give you a long and healthy life. Ameen. I am sending you this message to ask you to remember me and my family in your prayers. Jazakallah. I am sending you this message to ask you to remember me and my family in your prayers. Jazakallah. I miss you. Please pray for my family and my future ahead. Jazakallah. May Allah always keep you in good health and strengthen your hand. Ameen. Basu, message is not a message. Yeah? Yeah? I'm sorry. 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 حضور اطفال کے سوالات ہیں اور وہ لائن میں بیٹھے ہیں اگر حضور اجازت دیں تو ایک ایک کر کے آ سکتے ہیں چلو آ جائیں آ جائیں آ جائیں السلام علیکم پیارے حضور مائی نیم از نبیل محمود حیات آئی ایم تھرٹین ایئرز آؤٹ آئی ایم فرام مربج نارتھ جماعت ایسٹ ریجن مائی کوشچن از Sometimes people try to get rid of bad habits, but they make the same mistake again. So my beloved Hazur, what is the best way to get rid of bad habits? Hazrat Masih Maudalai has given us a very golden principle that if you want to leave any bad habit or any sin, you should first try to loathe that sin, hate that sin and make a firm promise with you and with Allah Ta'ala as well that you will never commit this sin or do this bad thing again, right? And also pray to Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala save you from the sin to be committed again by you or you practice it again, any bad habit or anything or you do something which can harm the other people or people consider or even Allah Ta'ala even says it is against the teaching of Islam and the true uh, Ahmadiyyat and the true Islam. So this all depends on your determination, prayer and dislike of that bad habit and sin. Right? Okay? تسلی ہو گئی ٹھیک ہے چلو
السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ پیارے حضور وعلیکم السلام فائق احمد مائی نیم از فائق احمد اینڈ مائی ریجن از بیت الحسن اینڈ ایم تھرٹین ایئرز اولڈ مائی کوشچن از اف یو میک گیمنگ ویڈیوز آن یوٹیوب آر یو الاؤ ٹو مونیٹائز یور چینل اینڈ ارن پروفٹ فرام دا ویڈیوز یو سی آل دیز ٹائپ آف گیمس آر سارٹ آف گیملنگ and islam prohibits a true believer to do gambling right therefore an ahmadi child is not permitted to do those game online which can get you some money whether you spend money on it or not but if it is a competition type of thing then some that is a different thing that if you participate in an event where and you were uh, be, uh, asked to if you give the correct answers you will be awarded this prize then that is a different thing but if you are playing any game for the sake of earning money that is a sort of gambling and it is prohibited right i okay Assalamu alaikum pyar hazur my name is Mahid Ahmed from Nasir region and I'm 15 years old my question is if something bad was happening to someone how would they know if they were being punished from Allah or if they were being tested by Allah you see if you mean that something bad happens which is happening because of your bad deed then obviously allah is punishing you because of that bad deed but you have to make this question clear what type of bad thing you think that may happen huh can you tell me if something bad happens what does it mean like yeah, so if something bad happens suffering huh yeah. suffering yeah. you see is suffering sometimes is a trial and mostly it is a trial to a small child to a young boy who is doing all the good things and a person who is a pious and righteous man if he passes through any suffering then it means it is a trial for him even the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that the prophets suffer more than an ordinary man and about himself he said then my sufferings and trials are more than any other believer so if you are doing all the good things you are obeying all the commandments of allah you are following all the teachings of islam you are prohibiting yourself from all the bad things you are doing all the good things then even if you suffer that means there is a trial but it all depends on your personal action and if you are not following the commandments of allah then sometime if you pass through any suffering that might be a punishment for you ha huh? allah knows better and you yourself can know yourself right whether if you are following the commandments of allah practicing the true teaching of islam following the true teaching of the holy quran the, the teaching of the holy quran all the commandments of allah taala then even if you pass through any suffering that is a trial but if you are not practicing good things and sometime allah put you in some suffering just to shake your shake you so that you repent and change your life and try to follow the the teachings of islam and the allah taala right okay okay next sure. سلام 
My name is Jamal Samoa and I am 15. I come from South Region. My question is, what is the importance of Salat? You see, Allah Ta'ala has said in the Holy Quran that uh, that I have created jinn and human being and that is also human being, the, the big people and the poor people and an ordinary person and a rich man to worship me. And Allah is not going to get benefit out of it. If we worship Allah Ta'ala, we are going to get, we are going to gain something out of it. And uh, you see, sometime so many people have experienced that uh, when they pass through some sufferings as the other boy asked, and when they pray to Allah Ta'ala to remove my, and bring it, me out from these sufferings, and then Allah Ta'ala listen to their prayers. Yes, you stand there. Stand here, stand here. Allah Ta'ala listen to their prayers and uh, remove the sufferings. Free the person from the sufferings. And, you know, and then at the same time, we also gain the love of Allah Ta'ala. And always remember that this is not the only life we are passing through in this world. Eh? There is another life to come. And that is hereafter. And that is the eternal life. There, Allah Ta'ala will also reward us from worship and following His commandments. Right? Okay. Yeah. So when you have any problem, you should try to pray and seek Allah Ta'ala's help in solving your problems. Right? But at the same time, you have to be regular and punctual in offering five time daily prayers. Not that when you come across any problem, then you go to the mosque and pray to Allah Ta'ala or you just stand in the corner of your house and then start doing Salat. No. You have to be regular in offering your prayers. Then Allah Ta'ala will listen to your prayers. Okay? Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi My name is Nawal Khan. I am from Tahir region. I am 14 years old. Hazur, my question is, by the grace of Allah, we have so many books of the promised Messiah Islam, but they can be quite difficult to understand. Hazur, what would you recommend is a good book for young people to read first? Uh, th you are quite right that there are quite a number of Islam's books, and most of them, they are very much difficult to understand. But there are some books which are easy to understand, right? Such as uh, uh, Ark of Noah, and uh, even Hazrat Muslim Allah Salatu Salam has said that my book, uh, Hakikatul Wai, is in a very easy language and you can understand it. And it has been translated also, I, th I think. Huh? So, you can read these books. But just to develop and create interest in the books of Muslim, you should first start reading from the passages of those books which are of your interest. And you can see the content list. And for that even the Jamaat has also made this one easy for you by printing uh, and some selected excerpts and passages of the book from the books of the Muslim al Islam in the form of essence of Islam. Right? So they are in four, five volumes. And 
that covers different topics. So you can just take the book and see the topic of your interest and then read it. And by doing this, you will develop and create interest in reading the books of Hazrat Muslim al-Islam. And at the same time, you will increase your knowledge also. What Hazrat Muslim al-Islam has said or he wanted us to understand with regards to our religion, with regards to our, our spiritual enhancement, spiritual level, and with regards to our knowledge and wisdom. Right? So, you, I think for a young boy, for young boys, it would be better if they read the book, Essence of Islam, and then select the topics from that book of their own interest. That will help you to create and develop interest in the books of his Muslim or Islam. Okay? Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, piyare huzur. My name is Samar Ahmed. I am from Beit al region and I am 14 years old. My question is, can I as a 14 year old lead namaz to my dad who is disabled and my mom? Uh, you are 14 years old. Yes, you can lead namaz if you, you know the verses of the Holy Quran and you have some religious knowledge. Of course, definitely you can lead namaz. Even if, if you remember Memorize the part of the Holy Quran. You can lead Taravi prayer even. Not even at home, even in the mosque. You can be appointed as Imam. No, pro no problem in it. Okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Piyari Hazur. My name is Samar Malik. I'm 14 and I'm from Makami region. Uh, my question is, what happens in Laylatul Qadr? The night of decree. You see, the Holy Prophet says that uh, during the last 10 days of, the, of Ramadan, there is one special night in which Allah Ta'ala accepts all the prayers which you are doing. And, uh, but at the same time, you have to be a true believer. Not that an atheist come to the mosque or a person who has never uh, offered um, um, prayer and only on the night of Laila Dhul Qadr, he just uh, go into sajda and um, in his uh, sajda position, he says, Allah Ta'ala accept my prayers. No. If you are a true believer and following all the commandments of Allah Ta'ala, offering five daily prayers regularly, reading the Holy Quran, practicing the teachings of Islam, then you can benefit from that night. And as the Holy Prophet says, said that you should try to find that night, during the last 10 nights of Ramadan, uh, in the odd nights, that is 21st and 23rd, 25th, 27th, 29th. So, even he did not precisely mention the night. He says, try to find Laila Qadr during the odd nights of Ramadan, last 10 days of Ramadan. Eh? So, that is Allah's promise that if a person is a true believer and whenever he is beseeching my help, whenever he is asking me and praying for his uh, problems, I will listen to his prayers and accept his prayers. Right? That is Laylatul Qadr. But before that, you have to be a good believer. Okay? okay. Assalamu alaikum, Piyari Hazur. 
My name is Arshad Ahmed and I am from Bethel Saban region. My name is uh, uh, my question is at uh, our uh, age how did you memorize the Quran and how would you recommend for me to stay devoted to the Jamaat? How did you memorize the Quran? You see we were uh, being taught uh, Quran in our school. You see during our time we we were studying in in Jamaat school in Rabwa. So there was a special Diniyat religious studies period where we were being taught uh, religious knowledge of the Jamaat. And at the same time, our teacher will ask to memorize some of the verses or the surah, small surahs of the Holy Quran. So this is how we used to learn and even in our Atfal classes, we were asked to memorize and there used to be a competition of uh, Talawat, uh, the hifz e quran eh? So this is how we used to memorize and this is the best way that uh, if you are holding competition or if you are studying in a school, then you are forced to learn. So. This is the one way. But here, we have Hafizun class. Those who can afford to go to the Hafizun class, they should try to learn Quran by joining that class. And those who cannot, then you should develop your own interest in the holy reading of the Holy Quran, memorizing of the Holy Quran. Yeah? And uh, at least try to memorize last 20-30 surah of the Holy Quran. This is how you will develop interest and then later on you can. And also remember that Atfal of the age of 13 and above and Khudam al as well should also try to memorize first 17 verses of Surah Baqarah. They write and also try to know the meaning of these verses because it's very important to know the meaning of the verses. This is how you can increase your uh, faith and you can save yourself from the, 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 from the attacks of the environment and bad people. Right? Okay. Okay. Exactly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Muvid Ahmed Khan. I'm 14 years old. And I'm from you are, you are, mu, mu, you are Muvid or Moyed? Muvid. Muvid. Okay. My question is What is your favorite memory from your time in Pakistan? Why do you want to remind me of my memories in Pakistan? Huh? Huh? I think, you see, they were quite. A number of things which I I cannot just mention offhand. Huh? Uh, my our memories were that uh, in Pakistan, in, I used to live in Rabwa. We were the Rabwa is the city where the majority of the people living there are Ahmadis. And uh, when we were tifal, we used to say salela to wake people up for fajr prayer. And uh, our atfal in each and every mohalla, in each and every area where there is Munsan atfal and Zain, they would call salela before Fajr, Fajr prayer. They will, you know, see, recite Salela before Fajr prayer. 
and it was a peaceful city. It is, it was, I should rather say, it was because now, because of the interference of the the government people or mullahs, the the peace of that city is just destroyed. Huh? So there were quite a number of good memories. Which, if I start explaining it, will take some time, and even where to pick and what to pick is very much difficult for me. <laughs> okay, so exactly, I will tell you sometime later when you personally see me. Exactly. Okay. My name is Usman Khalid and I am from Betafilto region. My question is, Allah is all-knowing and seek, seeing. So why did he create angels to monitor us? You see, Allah is all-knowing and all-seeing. Yes? When he created Adam, angels said that uh, we are here to praise you, to worship you, to obey you, to follow your commandments. Why you are creating a person who might uh, destroy the peace of this society and the world? Eh? And uh, so Allah Ta'ala said that I know better than you. Then he created Adam. And for the purpose, you see, he has created human beings and he has given them the, the, the free hand. And he told, has told them, these are the good things, these are the bad things. If you do good things, you will be awarded. And not only awarded here in this world, but in the hereafter as well. And that is the eternal life. You will be given, you will descend in to the paradise. So, and if you do bad things, then you will be punished. So one thing is that, that Allah Ta'ala has created human being and uh, to, to obey him, but he, at the same time he has given them free hand to do good or bad. But as far as angels are concerned, they have not been given any free hand. They have a fixed duty. They are bound to do, follow that. And they cannot deviate from what Allah Ta'ala has said. Right? So, and at the same time, angels are also uh, working as the servants of Allah Ta'ala. You have the capacity to go to your kitchen and drink water, bring out the bottle from the fridge, take the glass and drink water. But if you have the facility that a person is helping you to bring the water for you in your room, then you will ask him to do it. So Allah is Malik. So though, although Allah can do whatever He likes, but at the same time, He has appointed some angels for different duties. And through them, you see, for, as for, for instance, for example, Jibreel Islam's duty is to, to bring messages from Allah Ta'ala to the prophets. And, uh, and the, the, the way and, and the commandment of Allah Ta'ala is revealed through uh, Jibreel Islam. So, different angels have different duties. This is why Allah Ta'ala has created angels and He has made His team. So, that just is a system evolved by Allah Ta'ala to help Him. Although, 
Allah Ta'ala has the power to do everything on his own. But if he, he is a Malik at the same time, so if he has developed a system, then who are we to object on it? <laughs> okay? Sakla. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, pyare huzur. My name is Hamad Bhatt. I'm from Bet al-Fatul region, and I'm 14 years old. My question to you is, how can the existence of heaven and hell be proven? You see, if you are a true believer, then this is a part of the faith, that you will have to believe in the hereafter. And you will have to believe that if you do good deeds in this world, you will be awarded and will be sent to the paradise. And if you do bad things and commit sins, you will be punished. This is what a worldly person says, that we don't know what is going to happen. That is what the atheists are saying that we don't know what is going to happen in the world, here world, and there is no life after this life. That is what they believe. This is why they have uh, left the belief in Allah Ta'ala. So, if you, have, you are a true believer, you have to have a firm faith in the life after death. And if you have that firm faith, Iman bil ghayb, on Allah Ta'ala, then if you have Iman bil ghayb, eh, then you will definitely understand that there is life after death. And if there is life after death, then this is also a true promise of Allah Ta'ala and the true uh, injunction of Allah Ta'ala that if you do good things, you will be awarded and if you do bad things, you will be punished. So we cannot say we have not seen the heaven and earth, but if we have a firm belief, then we should say this is why you see, atheists are deviating or disbelieving uh, in the existence of Allah Ta'ala, that there is no life after death. So, for that, there is the book, Our God, and the existence, the ten proofs of the existence of Allah, it has been printed by Hudamul Amdiya, and you are now 15, quite a grown up. Why? You can read those books. Through this, you will learn more about the existence of Allah Ta'ala. When you will learn about the existence of Allah Ta'ala, then you will also know that whatever Allah Ta'ala has said is true. And after life, after this life, in the hereafter, there is the person is either rewarded or punished. Okay? So, I think you better read these books. That can give you a better answer. Okay? Acha. Zakala. Assalamu alaikum, Piyare Hazur. My name is Sabi Saleh Chaudhary and I am 14 years old. I am in the Southern Jamaat in Beit Subhan region. My question is, as Ahmadi Muslims, we believe in the promised Messiah Islam, but those who do not believe in him, will they be held accountable? You see, Hazrat Muslim Islam has said that there are quite a number of people who do not believe in the prophets. But you will not be punished in this world 
only because uh, you did not believe in, in the Prophet. But if you are doing bad things at the same time, along with not disbelieving, then you will be punished in this world as well and the hereafter. And you will be held accountable for committing all these bad things. But in the hereafter, Allah Ta'ala says that I will ask these people, when I sent these prophets, why did not you believe them? They will try to make so many excuses. And all excuses will be just lame and flimsy excuses. Right? Allah will not accept them. And they will have to pass through the punishment. So, obviously, yes, those who do not believe in any of the messenger whom Allah Ta'ala has sent will be held accountable for not believing them. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum, Piyar is Wa alaikum, Salaam, Umar Rashid Kamran. My name is Umar Kamran from Neom Jamaat East Region, and my question is why are the congregational prayers, Zohar and Asr, read quietly, whereas the congregational prayers, the Fajr, Maghrib, and Isha, are not? <laughs> you see, first thing is that what we do, this is how how we were taught by the Holy Prophet Second, that uh, Zohar and Asr prayer are the timings where when you are offering your prayer quietly, you can give more concentration on your prayers. So there are so many reasons given which uh, the main thing is, that is how it was practiced by the Holy Prophet This is how we follow. Okay. And if you want a detailed answer of it, you just write to me. I will give you some detailed answer with references. Okay. Now I have noted down your question and uh, I will give you a reply in writing, but you will have to write to me with your ad address, postal address, so that I can give you a detailed answer in writing. Jazakallah. Right? Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Pyare Hazur. No, My name sorry. is Abdul Ahad Mansoor. I, I am in the Bashir region and I'm 13 years old. My question is, many people sin but then pray to be forgiven. Therefore, are all sins forgiven? You see, Allah knows better. We cannot decide that that person will be forgiven or not. You see, a person, for instance, there's a story that a person committed, um, he, he, he was, he, he was, a, he, he murdered 99 people. And after committing such a heinous thing, um, sin, he, uh, then he tried to repent. He went to a person to ask whether he can be forgiven or not. The person, that pious, righteous person said that, no, you have committed such a big crime by killing 100 people, 99 people. 99 people, you cannot be forgiven. 
the person said, okay, if I have killed 99 people, so another one, and he killed that person, that righteous person as well. So making 100, right? Then after that, he again, you see, he had some good nature or something was inciting from inside that he should try to repent. Then he went to another person and asked him that if there is any possibility of my sins to be uh, forgiven, the person said, okay, yes, you can go to such and such person who is living in that town and city which is far off from here. And he started his journey towards that person, towards that city. So, while going, so he died on the way. When he died, then the angels from the paradise and the hell came to take his soul. So, when they, they reached there, the angel from the paradise was saying that he, since he was going to uh, repent, so I will take him to paradise. Allah Ta'ala wants him to be forgiven. And the person, uh, and the angel who was from the hell, he said, no, he has committed so such big things, uh, sins, and there is no way now for him to be forgiven. Hmm? Okay, ultimately they decided that they have tried to mire the land. If the person is near to that area where he was going, then he will be sent to paradise. And if he is, has not traveled long way from the place he left, and uh, that place where he was going was far, far away from, or the distance was more than the 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 this uh, the distance of the place from where he started. Then he would be sent to hell. So the Allah Taala made the situation in such a way that they, when they started measuring it, the the distance towards the place he was going became short, right? And the angel who was from the heaven took him to the heaven. So it all depends on Allah Ta'ala. Even Allah Ta'ala has said that I am the, the Malik and Allah, the God. I know whom I'm going to forgive and whom I will not. You see, there was a, in another story, there was a person who was a very pious person. He asked another person who was not that pious that uh, you, since you are not offering five daily prayers and you are committing bad things, you will be sent to heaven, uh, to hell. The person who was not very much pious said that, who are you? to say that I will be sent to hell, it is Allah who will decide. But the person who thought himself to be very pious and uh, or in another way, he should say that he was quite arrogant in this regard, said no, it is definite. It is quite certain that you will be sent to hell. Okay, when the person died, the, 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 it's, it so happened that uh, coincidentally both of them died at the same time. Right? When the soul reached to Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala asked the person who was uh, apparently very pious person, that who are you to decide that who is going to hell and going to who is going to heaven? It is me who has to decide. I am I am the God, all powerful, and omnipotent Allah. Right? 
then uh, you you said to this person that he will go to hell and you are you are you we thought yourself to be very pious person and you will go to heaven so now now decision is in my hand so i decide that this person whom you were thinking will go to hell i am sending him to heaven and you because of your arrogance and uh, thinking that you have done so many good things you will go to heaven i am sending you to hell so now it is allah taala who decides who is going to heaven and who is going to hell but our duty is that we should try to follow the commandments of allah taala and don't put ourselves in trial and don't put think that don't at the same time try allah taala that he will whatever we do we shall be forgiven and we shall go to heaven allah taala says that these are my commandments these are my injunctions this is my teaching this has been given in the holy quran if you are a true believer true muslim then to follow my commandments and injunctions right and then if you do it then it is my promise that i will send you to heaven and your sins will, if if you commit small sins even is being being a being being a human being you might commit some small sins that those small sins will also be forgiven by allah taala okay jazakallah now time is over you have taken 5 minutes extra the so that's all how many questions left those who have not ha huh? Hazur says, uh, so there's quite a few, but um, we had extra, just. Can they get extra? So they can write to me. If they have any question, they can write to me, then I will answer them in writing, reply them through letters. So now time is over. Okay, Jazakallah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Jazakallah. As-salamu alaykum wa What is his question? Yeah. What is your question? Assalamualaikum pyare hazur my name is Iyam Mahmood i'm from West Coin Jamaat Betul Saban region and my question is why are there atheists in the world and what can we do to help them understand than the existence of god you see i told you the other boy that they should read the book our god and the 10 proofs of the existence of god if you read that book you will know how to reply these people who are atheists okay and apart from that if you want any detailed answer you write to me i will give answer in writing to all of you who are not able to ask any question because of shortage of time so now the time is over allah hafiz wa nafir assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh assalamu alaikum